Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. It's another warm one out there, another boating pool kind of a day, but we do have a couple of shower chances and some changes. Welcome change in your seven days. But first, hundreds of families put on alert after more than 200 kids might have been exposed to bacterial meningitis while attending a summer camp. And that story does top our news at noon. Thank you for joining us. The Oakland County Health Division telling us 219 kids attended that camp, all within the ages of 5 to 12 years old, and they might have been exposed to an infected camp worker. Now, we know that the camp was held at the Lifetime Fitness over in Rochester Hills, right there on Avon Road off of Rochester Road. And the children might have been exposed between July 1st through the 11th of the same month. Guy Gordon is joining us live now with more on this story. And Guy, do we know how that camp worker is doing? this afternoon and if really any what else has been infected uh Everett, she's 21 years old she's from macomb county it's their health department that's handling this now and we are told that she's not doing well at all that she is in grave condition so we certainly need to keep that family in our thoughts at this noon hour but yes she was a counselor at this facility where the kids swim play tennis at this day camp as you say 219 families uh, to one degree or another were informed that their children needed to be checked for symptoms that has been ongoing we hope to have an update from macomb county health uh, anytime soon about whether or not those children presented with any kind of symptoms uh, that would be concerning in the meantime parents as you can imagine are concerned and in some cases frustrated <laughs> the older boy attends the Lifetime Day Camp where the infected counselor worked. Their mom says they, along with 30 other families, packed Crittenden Hospital last night seeking checkups and antibiotics. Her son was symptom free. Every day. He goes every single day. You have to look at for um, signs until July 21st. She's frustrated because when she picked up the boys at 6 p.m., there was no notification from the camp. She learned of the meningitis threat from a voicemail at home. When she tried to call the health department, it was closed. No hotline. She didn't get any information until her husband appeared at Lifetime Fitness in person. I did not receive an email. I had to fill out emergency paperwork when I signed him up for camp. They have my email address. They have my phone number. I never received an email. Medical attention was delayed by three hours. That delay is troubling because quick treatment is critical. Meningococcal meningitis is a very serious disease. It can get worse very quickly. Someone can go from literally having a headache and fever to being in a coma within a period of six hours even. So that's why we worry about it. And that is why uh, Melanie Hotzfeld is so upset about this. Uh, now, we should point out that Dr. McGeorge wants to stress that while this is contagious, it is not like a virus that you can pick up off a contaminated surface. This has to be spread person to person through either saliva or mucus and direct contact. Not easy to catch, but still contagious. Uh, of course, these kids are in close contact with their counselors at times. That's why they should all be checked. That is the authorization for the Macomb and Oakland County Health Departments at this time. Time. If you're one of the 219 families that was notified, have your child seek medical attention immediately. They'll check for symptoms, but most likely give you antibiotics, which will act as a prophylactic barrier to the development of this disease. We're live from Rochester Hills. I'm Guy Gordon, Local 4. Everod, back to you. Pretty scary stuff, Guy. Uh, child care area where my son goes all the time as well. Uh, as for that mother that you spoke to, I know you spoke with a lot of parents. What would that mother have like done instead? You know, she said she would have liked to have seen somebody at the curbside, at pickup, uh, handing out a flyer, telling them what to do. She would have liked to have seen a hotline with the health department that people could call to get information if they're concerned. And she certainly can't understand why they didn't have her contact information and why it was up to the health department to leave that voicemail, not Lifetime Fitness. All right, Guy Gordon reporting live for us this afternoon. We're still waiting to hear more from Lifetime, Lifetime Corporate. Uh, in the meantime, we have a special coverage section of this meningitis thread on the health page of our website. That is clickondetroit.com. There's information there on how you can prevent meningitis and everything that you need to know about the vaccine. So you definitely want to check there to stay informed. And of course, we'll keep you updated here on the air as well. Well, it's back to the 80s this afternoon. Dry right now, thankfully, Brandon. But you're talking about some afternoon showers and the possibility of that? Possible, but spotty and nothing like we've seen the last couple of evenings where we've had some severe weather moving through the area. Some strong wind damage reports uh, in parts of Macomb, Monroe, 
uh, up in St. Clair County, but nothing like that today. We do uh, get a chance for some spotty showers. We're already back into the 80s as we head uh, through Detroit into Ann Arbor and look up in Flint 85. Temperatures are three to five degrees cooler than we were at noontime yesterday. You remember the heat yesterday. It was part of the spark to cause the storms, but we've got a cold front coming at us. It's right through the center part of the state right now. You can also notice that the clouds are really starting to thin out and we expect temperatures to jump up as a result. So the increasing temperatures and the movement of this cold front mean between two and four or five o'clock. A couple of spotty showers shouldn't be anything violent at all. Otherwise, just the last of the really warm stuff here as we head toward the weekend. We will be in the upper 80s today and then cooling as we head into the weekend. I'll have more on that coming up. Alrighty, Brandon, we'll check back in with you. Close to 13,000 people are still without power this afternoon after strong winds last night caused about 41,000 outages throughout Metro Detroit. DTE is telling us that everyone should have power restored by tonight. So that is the good news there. Michigan State Police are investigating now after a mother and her two-year-old son are found dead in their Inkster home. The 30-year-old mother and son were found in their home on the 3800 block of Robinson Court near Inkster Road. Troopers say that the woman and infant were found by her husband at the top of the stairs of the home. The woman was slumped over with the baby in her lap. Investigators are now waiting on autopsy results and the victim's names have not been released just yet. And out of Southfield, where police are searching for the driver of a car who slammed into a liquor store. This happened at Evergreen and 12 Mile Road and we're told that an ATM was stolen from inside of the store. Although the front of the building is damaged, thankfully no one there was hurt. A woman was taken to the hospital after a house fire in Redford. Now the fire started around 3 a.m. on Virgil Street. The woman was alone in that house when the fire started, but was able to get out with any without any serious injuries. While the house did suffer some burn damage, a construction crew was already out working to fix that damage earlier this morning. And this afternoon, Crime Stoppers is offering a $2,500 reward for anyone who can help them find a teen who's been missing for more than a year now. 17 year old David Kindle, who you see pictured here, disappeared back in March of last year. He was last seen at his grandmother's house on the 1400 block of Rosemary, just north of Outer Drive on the city's east side. Today, David's families and family and officers gathered asking for anyone with information to come forward. Right now, we're just up in arms. We don't know which way to go. We just walk in the streets and looking. But any kind of help, any, any anything would uh, help us. Thank you and give our family some kind of closure. And we certainly hope they do get that closure. David's aunt is his legal guardian. The teen lost both of his parents to cancer when he was very young. If you have any information, again, you can call Crime Stoppers. Their number is 1-800-SPEAK-UP. A section of I-94 is back open this afternoon after a mail truck catches fire and causes quite a mess. Sky 4 shows video from the scene as fire crews were working to put out what was left of that smoldering mail truck. This was on westbound I-94 near Haggerty and Van Buren Township. Fortunately, no one was hurt in this fire, but there's no word yet on what caused this semi truck to catch on fire. All right, still ahead here on Local 4 News at noon, a woman leads police in a busy chase down a busy freeway, and it was quite a wild chase, in fact. Next at noon, the video that shows how this dangerous chase finally came to an end, and believe it or not, no one got hurt here. And an unarmed teen is shot and killed by police. Coming up, we've got the video that shows the entire controversial traffic stop that ended with the use of deadly force. But first, in an NBC exclusive interview, Syria's president opens up about the presidential race here at home and also criticizes the U.S. about how they're dealing with ISIS. His comments are coming up next. Hey guys, what did you do for your summer vacation? I'm willing to bet you it was not find the fossils of a 500 million, that's million with an M, million year old elephant. But I'm gonna introduce you today to two women who did. See you at four on First at Four. Like many great. Welcome back everyone. His country has been torn apart in a bloody civil war and ISIS continues to gain more territories in Syria. Now the Syrian president is saying that he believes the United States is not serious about defeating the terror group. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad sits down with an exclusive interview with NBC's Bill Neely. From what you know of Mr. Trump, is he smart enough? 
I don't know him. I have, when I sit with him face to face, I can judge him. He seems to respect President Putin. Mm. Does that give you hope that maybe he's a man you could do business with? If he's genuine, I think he's saying the right thing because uh, every person on earth, whether agree or disagree with President Putin, he should respect him. He told me American airstrikes against ISIS are ineffective and counterproductive. Whose fault is that? Is that a military fault or is President Obama simply not being, let's say, ruthless enough? Yeah. Uh, no, first of all, it's not about being ruthless. It's about being uh, genuine. The United States doesn't have the will to uh, defeat the terrorists. It had the will to control them and to use them as a card like they did in Afghanistan. ISIS is headquartered in your country, in Raqqa. If you knew that ISIS was about to attack the United States, would you warn America? As principle, yes, because they may attack civilians, and I cannot blame the innocents in the United States for the bad intentions of their official. This is not correct. And as, as I said many times, I don't consider the United States as direct enemy as they don't occupy my, my land. Well, I put many very blunt questions to him, including whether he was a brutal dictator. And he said, if a doctor cuts off a limb to save a life, you don't call him a brutal doctor. He's doing his job. Now, personally, he's very charming, but that is a chilling comparison when you're actually talking about the lives and the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Syrians. Back to you. And that was Bill Neely reporting here at home now. Police in Fresno, California have released this body cam video from a deadly shooting that resulted in the death of an unarmed teen. The shooting happened back on June 25th. You'll see here two officers pulling over 19 year old Dylan Noble. Who they confronted after reports of a man in the area carrying a rifle. Take a close look at this. Shortly after pulling him over, the cops fired four shots at Noble, who later died as a result of his injuries. The officers involved have been placed on administrative leave as the investigation into this uh, officer-involved shooting continues. And staying in California now, this wild chase. A woman leads deputies on a chase, ending in a casino parking lot. Check out the video for yourself. She stops at nothing, really, to avoid the cops. She drives over curbs. She doesn't stop at any traffic lights and even continues to speed around after her wheel pops, you can see the sparks there flying from the wheel well in the back of her truck. Unfortunately for her, though, the car couldn't outrun the cops forever. There she goes. She's out of the car. The cops were finally able to take her into custody, laying her down right there on the parking lot floor as they arrest her. New at noon. A troubling new story, a new study rather, finds more Americans than ever are engaging in road rage. Coming up, we'll tell you what researchers found about the new dangers of aggressive driving. Brandon? I used to be one of them, but I, I've changed my ways. And all I can say is you're welcome, because it wasn't good. Scattered shower chances, even though we're starting to see a little bit of sun, heating things up into the 80s could be the last really warm, sticky day for a while. We'll take a look at rain chances today and tomorrow and a cooler weekend. When more than 100 doctors and scientists co-signed a letter to the World Health Organization urging that because of Zika, the game should be either moved or delayed, it got the world's attention. But here, not so much. Do you yes. put on insect repellent? Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> not actually. I haven't met one Brazilian who, puts, who admits to putting on insect repellent. It's not a worry. People here are not concerned. Unless they're pregnant. There is a risk, but uh, it's, I, we, we don't think it, it's a uh, reason to, to postpone the games. A Zika disconnect tonight at 11 on Local 4. We've been clean. Welcome back, everybody. Yesterday storms. All right, yeah. so I went outside for a run, laced up the shoes, had the Bluetooth headphones, cell phone, everything, and then I looked to the north. Yes. And I saw these dark clouds, and I was like, oh, no. You are not going to catch right. me out in the rain. You've had that problem I've before. I've had that before. You use your number one weather tool, the eyes <laughs> and your senses. And it was a good call because yeah. we did have some violent storms yesterday and severe weather reports down in Dundee, up in Armada. We had some heavy uh, bursts of wind in St. Clair County as well. Some heavy rain and thunder in Oakland County where Everett is. And uh, 
things are better today. We still have a couple of shower chances today and tomorrow. We thought tomorrow would be dry, but we've added a little wrinkle into things. 80 degrees now, and we're really going to see things heating up. A, the skies are clearing. B, those winds out of the southwest. 13, a warm hair dryer just blowing warmer air in today. 10 to 20 mile an hour winds gusting over 20 at times. 88 degrees. Light shower chances or spotty shower chances here in the middle of the afternoon and maybe even into the early uh, evening, but doesn't look like anything big at all. Overnight, cold front passes through, gets much more comfortable down to about 65. Could be cooler, could be nice to keep those windows open tonight. We get rid of the humidity uh, at least for a few days here. And here's the cold front. Nothing showing up here on satellite and radar around southeastern lower and southern Ontario. But again, this forcing mechanism into this warm, unstable atmosphere will spark a few showers as it passes through this afternoon and maybe into the four or five o'clock hours early evening. Another little wave coming your way tomorrow, and this is something we thought would pass more to our north and east, but it is going to slide down and bring some cloud cover your way couple of different computer models, one for today, and there's a look at that front coming through and sparking a few of these showers. Could even produce a little bit of lightning. We're not expecting severe weather, but you always want to be careful with lightning. As soon as you hear thunder, you get indoors because if you hear it, you're within striking distance and you just never know in the summertime heat. So we want to be careful, but by five o'clock, things do look to be improving. And then we uh, fast forward as we head into tomorrow morning when jo join us on local 4 news today and we're watching this next wave which brings the clouds in for a good chunk of the day and you see this little line of showers nothing violent expected here in the 70s most of the day and yeah a couple of spotty midday showers possible 80 degrees on Saturday we're bringing back the weekend sunshine glory and up to near 85 by Sunday. We start bringing humidity back on Monday as temperatures build and looks like a chance for showers and storms on Monday. Everett. Alrighty, Brandon, a new AAA survey reveals a troubling trend. Eight out of 10 drivers admit to engaging in road rage. Researchers are saying that one of the most alarming findings of this all was that at least 8 million drivers engage in extreme road rage, which includes purposely purposely ramming, uh, ramming their vehicle into another vehicle or even getting out of your car to confront another driver. About 45% of drivers honk at other drivers when frustrated. That might be a little bit more normal. And close to 47% of drivers yell at other drivers. Now, experts are urging drivers to be patient, be forgiving, and when in doubt, just take a deep breath, maybe turn up your music just a little bit. All right, still ahead, a uh, long lost package is finally delivered, but it took 26 years to get to its owner. We'll tell you what was inside the package that nearly had the man who received it in tears. We're back in a moment. All right, finally here at noon, everybody, a man in Idaho was shocked to see a package delivered to his home that had been mailed more than 26 years ago. The old Pony Express, <laughs> perhaps. Marvin Wilson is a former postal worker and understands that mess ups can happen, but he was stunned when he received a little package with the date 1990. Yeah, the piece of mail came from his mother who had actually died eight years ago, and it was filled with photos from a dog show that his family went to in Las Vegas decades ago. I know it's called snail mail, but I think at that point a snail could have delivered it. Can you imagine that. though his emotions oh, going he's through that? So That's incredible. Very cool. Have a great day, everybody. We hope you enjoy the weather, and we'll see you tomorrow.